Sydney is getting bigger, a lot bigger. The Australian city is in the middle of building one of the biggest suburban rail projects in the world. This is a $64 billion infrastructure mega project unrivaled in size and scope, extending the city in nearly every direction. By 2030, Sydney will have 113 kilometres of new metro rail and 46 new stations. Driverless trains will run every four minutes beneath the harbour and CBD. The country's largest underground railway cavern has been created in the process, as well as its longest transport tunnels. Not since the Harbour Bridge, constructed almost a century ago, has Sydney built such a colossal and, quite frankly, city-defining project. Sydney is a city divided. Its iconic harbours make for beautiful postcards, but are an urban planner's nightmare. The north and south of the city are cut off from each other. Now, the history of Sydney's infrastructure has been the history of bridging this gap. Most famously, and literally, with the Sydney Harbour Bridge in 1932, the tallest steel arch bridge in the world. It took until 1992 to build the second crossing, the Sydney Harbour Tunnel, a dual carriageway that burrows under the water for nearly a kilometre, connecting North Sydney to the Central Business District, or CBD. Now, more than 30 years later, the Sydney Metro is the city's next major crossing, and it's being built in four phases. The first has actually already been completed, Sydney Metro Northwest. It became operational back in 2019, cost 7.3 billion Australian dollars, and included 36 kilometres of track between Chatswood and Rouse Hill. A staggering 15 kilometres of tunnels, 4 kilometres of bridges and 8 new stations were also built just as part of that phase. The second step, Sydney Metro West, features 24 kilometres of underground metro rail connecting Parramatta to Sydney CBD and that's going to cost 25 billion Australian dollars. Now, that's pretty vital because Parramatta is being set up as Sydney's future second downtown. That phase of the railway is due to be completed in 2030. The third phase includes the connection to Western Sydney Airport, costing $11 billion. This new international airport will open in 2026 and is expected to service more than 10 million passengers each year, easing the burden on Sydney's main airport, which accommodates one of the busiest passenger air routes in the world. But perhaps the most exciting phase of the project is the Sydney Metro City and Southwest section that's being built right now. This part of the project consists of two main components. The first is the conversion of 11 stations on part of the existing Bankstown line for use by autonomous driverless trains. The second is a new 15.5 km twin tunnel rail crossing under Sydney Harbour and through the city. That new tunnel bores 40 metres below the glittery surface of the Sydney Harbour, where it reaches the CBD. Carved from sandstone, it's the largest single rail line to be constructed under central Sydney since the City Circle Underground Railway was completed in the 1950s. It's a feat of engineering that included the construction of Australia's largest underground railway cavern at Victoria Cross Station. The mammoth space is 265 metres long, 25 metres wide and 20 metres high. In terms of length, that's comparable to Sydney's recently completed Salesforce Tower lying on its site. Or for those of you not down under, San Francisco's Transamerica Pyramid. It's absolutely huge. Inside this cavern, 31 metres below the streets of Sydney, a new station is currently taking shape. Escalators, a mezzanine and the platform that future commuters will use are all being constructed. In 2019, tunnel boring machines broke through into the cavern and connected the station to the new train network. It's these machines that have been hard at work beneath the streets of Sydney and under the harbour. 16 of them will have been used on the metro expansion once it's completed. You can kind of think of them like enormous sandstone-eating worms. They operate between 35 and 58 metres below Sydney, diving beneath existing infrastructure. They typically weigh more than 1,100 tonnes each and reach 120 metres in length. That's about the weight and length of an A380, the world's largest and heaviest passenger aircraft. 
They work by slowly cutting through rock at the speed of roughly 120 meters a week. They each have a cutter head, which in itself weighs 100 tons. That acts as a drill and can tunnel through rock six times harder than concrete. The rock is crushed by high-strength alloy steel discs on the cutter head. These rocks are then scooped into the machine's head and onto a conveyor belt, which carries them through the length of the machine and out into the tunnel behind it, before transporting it up to the surface. Concrete ring segments are delivered to the building area up front and put in place to hold up the tunnel. Each concrete ring is connected to the previous one in a long chain, and that's how the tunnel is built, piece by piece. Each TBM includes a crew of up to 10 people working on them, including an operator at any one time. Inside them are offices, a kitchen, and even a bathroom. A state-of-the-art navigation system keeps these machines on track at all times and ensures they don't accidentally drill into something they're not supposed to. By 2030, these 16 machines will have completed more than 56 kilometers worth of tunnels. That's more than was built to connect Paris and London. Of particular interest is a specialized TBM that had to be purpose-built to dig under Sydney Harbour. It's called a slurry TBM and was used to cut through the different ground conditions in the seabed. It used pipes and fluid to control the pressure in the machine by turning the excavated material into a slurry and then pumping it out. This means the excavated rocks were crushed and mixed with fluid so they could be more easily removed from the tunnel. This massive infrastructure push will go a long way to addressing the needs of Sydney ciders both now and in the future. By the middle of the century, Sydney's population is expected to increase by up to 60%. Now, not all of those people can or should be driving cars to get around. The city is notoriously congested and has by far the most traffic of any in Australia. In fact, New South Wales is spending $16 billion alone over the next five years just to address this congestion and expand Sydney's roads. But new roads won't be enough. Sydney, like many major cities around the world right now, is facing a reckoning when it comes to its over-reliance on cars. And expanding its metro in such a massive and thorough way will provide Sydney siders with a valid new mode of transport. The history of Sydney really has been the history of bridging its divides. And this enormous $63 billion mega project brings each side of the harbour just that little bit closer. Don't forget that we're inspiring the next generation of builders through our investment into Brickborrow, a fantastic LEGO subscription service. You can learn more and get started today over at brickborrow.com. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M.